Okay, now let's look at some impressions of Celeste's poetry. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at a bit about the context of how his poems were published and what it really says about him as a poet. Now, first of all, his poems were published in books mostly, and they were published often on a small scale. There's a sort of point of difference between him and, and a lot of poets that came before him, particularly in Europe, was as opposed to those poems being sort of shared around sort of uh, different communities and not really focusing so much on, on, on being published. Celeste's poetry was written in the, in the sense that they almost written for publishing. They were written to be published. They were often published on a small scale. A lot of his, particularly his earlier poetry, was printed in a very small uh, workshop. And they often came with different drawings who, from his friend and, and companion Norman Lindsay, who is a very famous Sydney artist and he was well known for drawing sort of nudist imagery and, and nudist paintings, which for Victorian England at the time, or sorry, Victorian Australia at the time, who we still sort of carried on a lot of our old habits from the old country, was sort of very quite risque. He was quite a controversial artist for that reason, because of the fact that he did paint nudes, and which is something that we sort of had gone away from, particularly after sort of Victorianism came in, and a lot of the, the nudist imagery from the earlier sort of eras had been covered up. He went straight out and ignored that and said, "I'm going to paint nudes anyway." Is quite famous and fits in quite well with Slessor, who was one who opposed censorship and was very much about free expression. And so these two go along quite well, and for that reason, Lindsay did also include some of his wood carvings into uh, Celeste's poetry books. Those were in his initial poems. Of course, his later poems, the ones we read now, and I guess where a lot, a lot of his success was gained was actually after he stopped writing poetry, when a lot of these things were, were published in sort of anthologies of his poetry, and we started to see some of his, his poems really hit more mainstream circles. He stopped in 1945. He, he completely abandoned writing poetry after World War II and he became involved quite a lot in publishing instead. He did continue working as a journalist, but mainly he also started really working in publishing and started to take on different projects that sort of bent the rules of censorship and, and certainly even ironically went on the Australian Censorship Board to sort of try and loosen up some of the old conventions on it and start to let some more things through. So, it, ironically, he did actually become involved in censorship, but it was mainly to sort of uh, perpetuate his views that Australia shouldn't be a nation of, think, of censors, that we need to start really to be progressive, to move a forward as a, as a country, to be modern as a, a group of people. We need to sort of really move away from these values of, of particularly England, but also these values of censoring things. And so he became quite heavily involved in, in publishing. He also sort of if you look at him biographically, he feels that he, he be, his poetry became too structured and he, he lost a knack for it. After Five Bells, which is one of his last poems, and certainly after Beach Burial, he completely lost the, the ability to be able to write poetry. For that reason, completely gave it up. We sort of see poetry sort of being written in his younger years and in his older years, he completely left it behind and started working on other things. He is progressive, as I mentioned before. He was an advocate of freedom of speech and expression. His, his nihilistic views, which do come across quite strongly, Certainly this anti-authoritarian, certainly, and if you look at a number of his different poems, does come across quite strongly. He was one who really wanted to push for modern Australia and one who wanted to move away from a lot of the old values, which I guess we still sort of uh, feel from time to time that we sort of get sucked into the old habits of, of the old country, so to speak. And even now that Australia is quite a progressive society, there's this idea that it's because of people who wanted to really instill this modern idea of Australia that we get that and yet we still sort of burden a little bit by this bushland culture and this idea of the man of man from snow river and, and Henry Lawson's short stories and all these sorts of things which really advocate us as a nation of people who live in the bush even though if we're looking at this in the modern context of course we majority of us live in cities a lot of us value being able to have freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Also, it sort of reflects Sydney, and he had a great love of Sydney. This harbour image, which um, he, uh, he does use the sea quite a lot, but because it becomes a great, really great influence on his poetry as well, and certainly we do see this quite strongly in his work. If you look at all of these things together, we sort of get a very strong context of Slessa as one who is a city dweller. He's one who looks at the modern values of what a city brings and certainly he's quite progressive in that sense. Through his work in publishing he also paved the way for I guess a lot of others who sort of thought like him and certainly we see that mindset in his poetry but it's one that he continues on with and certainly we see it with a lot of the more progressive works in Australian culture now.
to look at this and look at, I guess, a future direction now of where to go with these sorts of ideas is to, to look at, at his poems again in that sort of light and that he really does sort of feel that his poems, I guess, have more in common with perhaps a lot of the European poets than the Australian ones and you sort of have to look at why that is and it's probably because of a lot of these different values. Okay, but that's about it for Celeste's poetry in context and in summary and until next time, I'll see you later.